Blessed be, welcome to the Circle of Hecker, I'm Lady Amaris. Now, I didn't think that I'd have to make this video, but it looks like looks like I have. Uh, and um, so just to, to give you a bit of background, um, I have started a, um, a business that's online. It, uh, it caters, well, I originally wanted it to cater for the, um, the Perth, West Australian um, area, but it is an online store that does cater for the world, you know, Australia and, and beyond. But the original idea was to allow and have a and people to have access to um, occult um, witchcraft items that have been um, made um, by witches, uh, for witches or people who are, are interested in um, witchcraft um, and, and having things that you don't normally find in Perth. Uh, Perth used to have quite a few stores that were a little bit more um, pagan slash witchy in, in um, merchandise. The, you don't find that um, anymore. A lot of it is um, a lot more um, crystals and, and angels and um, um, a few tarot cards and whatnot, but very, very um, much to do with uh, crystal jewellery and, and there's lots of crystal places now. There's nothing wrong with crystal places, but um, when the majority of places are um, less um, being able to get ha your hands on candles and herbs and, and witchcraft books or other, other spiritualities, other pagan spiritualities, um, other, other, kind, uh, you know, other ideas, you know, different types of um, um, incenses, all of those sorts of things, um, you, it's almost impossible to find in Perth without going online. So, um, so that's why I started you know, you know, my store because I just got frustrated of not being able to find certain things and having to go online, even though I understand that, yes, my store is an online store, but you've got to start somewhere. <laughs> um, and part of that is doing um, market stalls and um, psychic fairs and, and whatnot so that people... Um, get a taste of, of what I've what I've got but also it is to um, get them to, to know that I exist and also that there is an online store if they're not able to maybe get to a, um, a, a fair or, or one of the, the places that I have got my store so it's a you know, it's a bit of you know, getting getting my name out there getting people to know that, that I exist and uh, it's been going quite well but um, I got a call yesterday from one of the places that I had um, applied to to do a, a stall, a psychic um, psychic and healing fair. There's been quite a few that have been going on um, at the moment. Uh, it's summertime in Perth, and there's lots of opportunities for, for market stalls and, and, and things and, and fairs and and stuff and yeah, the like. And um, so. Uh, as I do with 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 every uh, stall, I do a um, a preliminary email where I say this is who I am, this is what I do. Is it something that um, would be okay for your your event uh, before I go and apply, just to give um, them a bit of a bit of a heads up? They can have a little bit of a look, and at that point they can go um, yes or no, because a lot of times when you're when you're applying for market stores, you have to put down a deposit, and then you know I don't want to have to put down a deposit and then have my market stall um, rejected, and um, then have to go through the process of you know getting that money back. It's just you know it's a lot easier to do it this way, um, and it means I don't have to fill out form after form after form and and, and be rejected. But anyway, this place I did that. Everything was fine. So they said, yep, happy to have you apply, put down the application, paid the deposit, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, everything was, um, was approved. Um, yep, you're going to be there. You know, 
welcome you know it'll be it'll be fun to have you there and that was fine so that was quite a few weeks ago that I think that's two maybe three weeks ago a week in and a half um, before the event starts and I get a phone call to say look you know really um, sorry about this but um, a few of the psychics that are going to be at the event have found out that you're going to to be there. That that witchcraft is going to a witchcraft stall is going to be there. They're not comfortable with it, and they're threatening to um, to not you know, not attend to uh, to um, you know, cancel their their attendance. Which you know, for the the people who are doing um, the event, you know, isn't something that they want to do. They don't want to have their psychics because it is a psychic, you know, psychic fair. They don't want they have to have their psychics leaving. So, um, and I said, look, look, I understand. That's fine. Um, you know, I'll, um, you know, I'll withdraw my stall. That's, you know, I understand. And I was, and that's why I do that cursory email because I know that some people um, aren't. Um, aren't comfortable with witchcraft and but I would always thought it was people you know, you know we, we say in a, in a funny way muggles or non-magic people or um, you know people who aren't in that um, that spiritual stream uh, who would be a little bit kind of oh, not too sure about the whole witchcraft thing being at, at a store which I get it's, it's you know it's fine um, what I don't kind of understand is people who um, say that they're spiritual or say that they're psychic who then don't want to have witchcraft, which is just another different stream, another different package of spirituality at an event because they're frightened or they're afraid or, you know, it's not, not something that they do. Um, I would have thought it would be a great opportunity to then learn about something that they weren't, you know, they didn't know about. Uh, fear is basically fear of the unknown, fear of something that you're not, um, it's, it's not the norm, it's what you're not used to, so you, you're fearful of it. Um, so this in a, in a neutral setting uh, would have been the perfect opportunity to learn about something that you're not um, sure of. Um, and then you would probably find um, that you had more similarities than not, okay? That the packaging, the way something looked, was probably different, but on the inside, it's the same. It's, a, it's kind of like um, having two, um, two soft drinks coming from the same, um, same warehouse, um, both lemonade, um, um, but one um, goes in the left direction and is packaged with um, with blue um, a blue covering and white writing, and then the other um, other side goes and is packaged with um, a green covering and white writing or, or or whatever. So in essence, inside they're still the same lemonade, still made from the same vat, still made from the same um, recipe, but the outer covering is different. Okay, and some people might like drinking from the from the blue uh, can, and some people might like drinking from the green can. But that doesn't mean that the people drinking from the green can are wrong. Um, they should be, you know, everyone needs to be drinking from the blue can. Yeah, it, it, it's like that. Um, and I would have thought that people who report themselves to be spiritual and psychic would would be. I don't know more understanding than um, than than muggles than people who weren't of a of a magical spiritual um, um, ideal. Uh, so it was basically um, disappointing and sad that um, in two thousand and eighteen you still had people who were frightened and. Um, ignorant and intolerant of, um, of other spiritualities that are not their own. Um, to the point where they band together and become some kind of like spiritual mafia where it's our, our type of spirituality that, and any other spirituality we're going to push out because um, we're frightened of it and we can't have it here. Um, 
you know, there's no, uh, as far as I know, there was no um, clause to say that you you had to partake in every single stall that was there and, and you had to buy something from every stall or, or look at every stall or, you know, yeah. So, um, I, you know, if you were interested in something, then you would look at it and you would ask questions. If you weren't, then, then, then not. But at least have the, um, the variety for everyone to pursue what type of spirituality works for them. Um, you know, they may actually like the green can in, instead of the blue can. Um, they find something that resonates with them with the green can instead of the blue can. Um, but pushing the green can out and only having the blue can because you're afraid of the green can, um, that, yeah, again, smacks to me of um, spiritual mafia, the... the, um, the uh, the, the party line, the, um, the, the official um, way of being spiritual. Um, and, yeah, I just, I laughed and, and um, I kind of asked if they were really that psychic, couldn't they work out what type of person I was? Um, and um, if you're Christian, then anyone who practices any kind of divination is seen as a witch, is seen as in league with the devil and uh, should be burnt at the stake. Um, so having, having people who would be classed as witches by anyone else discriminating against people who are witches, it, it's just, it, it's sad. And uh, it, it's it's funny because um, yeah they would be classed as witches. The um, the witchcraft act of uh, 1735, uh, which com came from England and was adopted by Australia, uh, and also came into part of the vagrancy act, um, which is used in Australia to you know stop homeless people and, and, and whatnot, but is part of that, of, of having people who are fortune tellers and, uh, and um, you know, taking money for, for reading people's fortunes. Um, the, the very last place to have the Witchcraft Act re repealed um, was the Northern Territory, and that was 2013. So... As far as I know, there is, um, there is not a lot of information about Western Australia. So as far as I know, either Australia, uh, Western Australia didn't adopt the Witchcraft Act to begin with, um, or it's still in effect, or there doesn't seem to be any information to say when it has, um, when it was repealed. Um, if anyone... You know, if anyone's from Australia, Western Australia has uh, any kind of information about um, Western Australian law and knows where I can find that information, that'd be great. Please, you know, put that information down below. But as far as I can tell, there is no information really about that part. So for all intents and purposes, um, witchcraft, fortune telling, um, being a psychic is still illegal in Western Australia. Um, so, um, quite funny. Um, many of the, um, the tarot readers and, and psychic mediums could be um, hauled off to jail. Um, and part of the, the Witchcraft Act is that um, the penalty is a year in jail. Uh, but then quarterly through that year they will be taken to the public um, the public square where they would be um, bound and then people could throw um, stones, vegetables, you know, whatever they could lay their hands on at them and then they would be marched back into jail um, until the next time, so for a full year. Um, so it is, it is basically tarring... Um, psychics, tarot readers, um, fortune tellers, and witches um, it, with the same brush in the same in the same thing. So Christianity says fortune tellers are bad, and and uh, basically witches, 
the law until um, 2013 um, in, in Australia um, said that um, you know, fortune tellers and, and witches uh, are bad. And then here in 2018, in a small little psychic fair, we have the spiritual mafia saying that witches are bad, but um, everyone else um, is is good because we have our we have our guides and our guardians and our angels. Um, so we're so we're better than you, um, which is sad. Um, and um, yeah, I feel I feel bad for for people who have been subjected to that kind of bullying within a spiritual um, community, saying that our spirituality is better than your spirituality. You know, we we hang out with the angels, and you know, because you happen to to not, um, then uh, then then you're bad. Um, you're fearful. We're afraid of you because you're you know you're on the dark side. We're on the light. We're light workers or something. And I just I just think it's. Yeah, it's sad. Um, it's it's sad and and also a, a bit a bit funny because uh, I know that there will be two, maybe maybe three, maybe even more um, actual practicing witches who will be at the event. Providing services. But they won't be telling people that they're witches. For the simple fact that the, uh, the discrimination against witchcraft. And I also know of people who have their business as part of the spiritual new age community who are practicing witches, but won't say that, won't have that in their, uh, in their spiel, uh, for the simple fact that their business will dry up, They're, they won't get people going to their workshops, they won't get people um, you know, um, availing themselves of their, of their services. They, uh, because of the discrimination, but at the same time, they are teaching witchcraft. Witchcraft pervades everything that they are, uh, are, are giving. And uh, these very same people that would, uh, are, are fearful and poo-poo are themselves using witchcraft techniques, most probably learned by these, uh, these undercover witches. So for them to discriminate against someone who has decided to not hide in the shadows, not conceal who they are, not be um, inauthentic in the spiritual community um, is, uh, is ostracized, made to, uh, to leave the, the playground um, because they're not wearing the same uniform as everyone else. Um, it's just sad. Um, it's sad that the spiritual mafia is, uh, is part of spirituality. It's sad that you can't have different streams all working uh, together um, it's sad that in 2018, uh, people still have to hide their spirituality, which is still need to be in the broom closet, so to speak, even within a spiritual community that is supposed to be accepting and, and embracing and understanding of spirituality supposed to have a higher calling and not be not be swayed by mundane uh, society um, to be able to see the inner person inside not 
just what's on the outside. My idea of people who are report themselves to be spiritual or enlightened or awakened or um, psychic of, of any, any um, stature should have um, a little bit more knowledge about certain things. Um, if they are truly in touch with their guides and their guardians and their angels, uh, would not these guides and guardians be giving them information about different spiritualities? Um, would they not consult their guides and guardians? Um, if they were truly in touch with them, then they should have no fear um, of any other's spirituality. Um, it all seems to be on how your spirituality is packaged. Um, if you have lots of bright white light, um, references to angels, um, white, um, white feathers, white angel wings, um, you know, nice pretty, um, pretty crystals, crystal grids, um, anything that is um, safe looking and bright and white um, seems to be the, the order of the day. Um, it's good. And uh, you know you can come you know, apply your wares, but um, if it's any other spirituality, then the uh, the spiritual mafia have um, deemed fit for everyone. Then um, then you get pushed out. Um, and again, I just it, it's sad. I I can't understand how supposedly enlightened, enlightened, and aware people or people who are norm and they're offering their services of guidance and healing have um, no tolerance for anything that's not um, their brand um, and it just shows to me just how spiritually unaware and how spiritually unenlightened um, many people really are um, if they fall back on this um, this fear if they um, if they if they swallow the 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 party line or the, the what society has said that this is this is to be true um, especially if they're doing uh, things that you know four or five years ago in the country that they live in um, was seen as illegal and um, and morally corrupt um, then um, yeah um, I just I just don't get it um, and it just uh, again it um, what comes to mind is is a quote that I heard from from another YouTuber. I can't remember who it was, um, but it was something to the effect of those who shine the brightest light also cast the darkest shadow, and it's quite evident in in the spiritual community is that the ones that seem to report that they are of the light. Uh, seem to show their dark, um, sinister, fearful, intolerant, ignorant shadows. Um, and it's sad. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll finish off here because I don't, I don't have an answer for it. I just... It just makes me sad that, um, yeah, we have so lack of um, knowledge and um, understanding of of different spiritualities. We're still we're still in that ignorance, um, even in so-called spiritual realms, when we're no more evolved or, or better than than anyone else. Um, we haven't really learnt anything. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, we're still 
2018, we still have a long, long road to go. Um, yeah. Blessed be. If you like this video and want to see more, please click on the links provided. If you think this witchcraft thing may be for you, please subscribe. Blessed be.